First, let's talk about what's hot now. Didn't it? I thought you were telling us it's time to go. No, go. no. I'm excited, though, because Thanksgiving is only three days away, which is great. Yes. Of course, that means, yup. Black Friday is also coming up. Last year, Americans spent $9.1 billion on Black Friday. By applause, will any of you be lining up for Black Friday? A few. Everybody, some are shaking their head. Any of you guys? Yes, oh, no. No. absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think of Black Friday, it's the Olympics of shopping. You know, <laughs> there's so much pressure, and I don't even play Xbox, but on Thanksgiving Day, I need to be there in line for the Xbox. Like, I just, I, I don't know just why. Just you got it. Yeah, just because I, I want to win. It's the Olympics of stress. Are you kidding? Yeah. Who would want to be in a pile of people trying to save $5.99 on some draws? Yeah. It's a. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're vicious. I see people like throw the leg out, Johnny, sweep the leg, like push the head down. But that's why I do Cyber Monday, so I can yeah. stay home and be on the computer and do my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But some people do both. Every day right. Cyber yes. Monday for right. me. You can find uh, a like, deal any day. Just look on, everyone do a little cross comparison. I mean, I know I, people that do it like mother daughter thing, go for Black Friday, like a bonding thing well, too. Need, I don't do it. You need, you need, oh, a, so yeah, because you need a tag team strategy. Yes. Because one person waits in line while the other person is in the aisle collecting all of the sale items, oh, and then that way they hold oh, a place yes. in line. You know what I that have is? it all down. If anybody wants to come, <laughs> send me your email. This is supermarket <laughs> sweep. You know how you go, yeah. someone goes to the basket and you get your collective and but it goes to the But it used to be that way, because I remember as a kid, Kid, yes, we would do Black Friday with my mom and my sister, and it would be a fun bonding moment. But now it's just gotten ridiculous. It's way crazier now. Because than people it was. just become very aggressive. Yeah, yeah you don't and that's need that 80-inch jumbotron screen the day after yeah. Thanksgiving. Well, I might. <laughs> but I don't know about that. But uh, you know that more young couples than ever before have joint bank accounts before they get married. The millennials, and I would think that would lead to some awkward conversations come Black Friday if you use that bank account to get something your partner isn't interested in. Mm -hmm. There was a survey by the Credit and Financial company Credit Karma found that half of all millennial couples are opening up joint bank accounts before they walk down the aisle. Unlike the baby boomers, I'm one of the so few people I know have did that before marriage. Do you have a joint? We have a joint and then we have separate. Mm -hmm. So we have one that we pull for like more household expenses right. and That's stuff what like we that. Do. We yeah. just yeah. I mean I've been with my husband for five years now and it took us to about two months ago to get a joint account just for the house uh, expenses, but I think the independence of having your own bank account is very important in yeah. a relationship. You need that independence. But I'm surprised people, would you do this before getting married? No, well, my grandmother always said, have your own money and don't let nobody look into your account, and that's how I live, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. I you know, well, it, but how my, do you split the bills? Like, how would you do that? Well, like, you can have, you can have a group thing, but I'm going to have my thing, which is going to be more than the group thing, guarantee you. Yeah. Okay, you know wow. what I'm saying? And but you they, can never dip into yours, is no, what you're saying? Absolutely not. Now, I can dip in, in case of emergency, into his pot. Oh, but, oh, but, oh you know, yes. the way you have a double standard there. Of course there. I do. Mm -hmm. I'll dip in your pot. It, I think it's good that millennials are having these conversations. I mean, it's it's good to have them because it is awkward. And sometimes you get into a relationship with someone and you find out all this dirty laundry about their financial history. So at least they're having it up front before they're getting married. I think but doing I, it because no? this is the only thing they're probably doing together because they do so much stuff on social media without somebody else. It's like, can we finally do something together as a couple? And so many of them are not living together, so it's just sort yeah. of a continuation of that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we were just talking about shopping, and we know a lot of people who we consider shopaholics, but researchers in Norway have now created a test that you can take to determine if you have a real problem. It's called the Bergen Shopping Addiction Scale, and it includes questions like, these are real questions, do you shop slash buy things to change your mood? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I noticed it got very quiet. Mm -hmm. Have you decided to shop less but have been unable to do so? If you choose agree or strongly agree for four out of the seven questions, it means that you really do have a problem. We all took the test. Mm -hmm. Everybody here took the test, yes. actually. Ooh. We have the results. Yeah. Let's oh, find yeah. out. Here are the results. So no all that. right. You have the results. Where's the panel? Lance, you and I are not shopping addicts. Wow. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Megan? Yeah. Borderline. Oh, I'm on, on the, the fence. I can go each way, yeah. You're your so, okay. you know what that means for you, Yamanika and Liliana? 
you're full on shopaholics, you have a problem. I, would, I thought I she would be. I didn't think I would be either because you know what I love to do. I love no. I, I mean, to shop. I love to shop. But you know what I love? I love a deal. You like I love a cheap. good salvation. You can still be a cheap shopaholic. But I like to go online and put all the stuff in the cart and just look at the cart. I never complete the party. I, I, I get that way with infomercials, <laughs> like watching QVC or infomercials. I I, I get addicted to that, and yeah. I will buy everything if I see it on television. If oh, someone's really? selling it to me, you I'm buy off those really. I do, oh, Magic Bullet, all that kind of stuff. Do you return I, it I, yeah, do you no, no, I, no I keep returning? them. Even if they don't work, I, I keep them. See, we do that. I yeah. buy and then I return because I have a tremendous amount of guilt. I'll go back the next day and be like, oh, I didn't quite need that. It's like mom guilt. Do you sneak way. by? I, I put things in my closet. Yes, I do. You do? Yes, I do. But I'm a cheap buyer. Like, I'll buy something really Why cheap. Why do you hide it? Because I feel bad. I mean, we have kids, and I'm like, I feel bad. And what did guilt. you buy that you feel bad about like the dresses kids? dresses or clothes. Like, I'll buy, oh. like, I'll go to the Gap and get a lot of stuff, and I'll be, like, putting it in my closet because like, I don't want my... Things for yourself. for myself, yeah. and I hide it. But it's like putting in your trunk of your car. Does anyone here put anything in their trunk of their car? So it's the same oh. thing. I open all the boxes that come, because we live in New York, so everything gets delivered. I open all the boxes, I get rid of the evidence, and then I hang everything in my closet so he never knows yeah. that anything oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna don't check myself into some what, kind what of right? What would he say? You, just, you, have why, right? you have enough stuff. Oh. Why do you need so much stuff? And he's right, at the end of the day. Then you put him in the trunk, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> we told the audience. You guys, you don't get off the hook. <laughs> Not many, but 14% of you mm. folks are Shopping addicts. Liars. So you know that, all right? Liars. All right. Hold up your hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Moving on. Kate Blanchett is definitely not addicted to shopping, at least not for underwear. The Oscar winning actress told People Style that people would be horrified if they could see her underwear draw. She says she still wears underpants. I don't get her mother made her in high school. I, what mother is makes clothes? I, I don't know. Or knitting but them? she says they're so old it looks like prison gray. Oh. I know and she is. wears them on the red carpet and everything, so you I, know how that is? Well, you don't even wear underwear. Okay, here's the deal. I've admitted to my... Uh, uh, ladies and gents, whoever's in there, I admit, I am i don't wear underwear a lot, but I do have... I'm cheap, and I have underwear that has holes in elastic shot, and when I do, I, and it's a lot of information. I do put on. I am wearing underwear today because I'm at work. Thank you here, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a law. It's an HR violation if I don't, but I'm like... It, my mom says, air it out. <laughs> <laughs> And on, on a normal day, would put on like a dress with nothing underneath. Yeah, it. yeah. Short, it's, but you, you wear a short want dress all the time. It's free. Do you go? No, I would never do that because I it love gets men do stuff a lot. down there. Uh uh. Yeah. Why would you do that? It just feels liberating. Well, I'm sorry, heard, I'm getting a headache. I heard now. that somebody on this panel got new underwear like every day when they were on tour. Yeah, that'd somebody. be me. I, I have not. <laughs> look, I I got spoiled on tour. Uh, I have not bought socks and underwear in years. And when I was on tour. On our rider, you know, this is so That's southern so to me. Bad. Usually people be like, champagne, all this. No, I just wanted socks and underwear, whatever city I went into. Why? And there's, because JC taught me this, where it, it feels amazing to put brand new socks on every day. Mm. So I would have brand new socks and underwear, never wear a pair twice at all. Yeah. But now I get my new socks and underwear every Christmas from my mom and dad. Like, usually oh. you're like, I don't want socks and underwear. Now I want the socks and underwear. Yeah, and that's kind of sweet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm wearing leotard. Yeah. I'm wearing leotard, yes, I do. <laughs> Moving on, kids. <laughs> Do you live with your husbands before you were married? Or did you live with your husbands? Or whatever that says. Refinery29.com has an essay from one of their editors who says she may have moved in with her fiancé too soon because it really created some upheaval in the, in the relationship. And she realized she wanted more private time, not always him being there, although she loves him to death. And she thinks the relation worked out the same way. They're engaged now. But she sort of is rethinking it. And not, if yeah. it's your fiancé, you should be testing it out first. And boyfriend, girlfriend, if, I don't no, think she, you should live together. But fiancé. You don't? Really? You don't think they should live together? Boyfriend, boyfriend girlfriend? girlfriend? No, I think you need your own space at the beginning. Or like with, with my after. Well, with my husband, you know, <laughs> he had his own apartment, but we spent pretty much every night together. He basically lived with me, but it was nice knowing there was yeah. a place for him to go. Well, I, I tell just... women this. This, this is what I say to women. Don't let somebody test drive you or audition you to be a wife. You get in that house when you get that wedding ring and you go down the aisle with that dude. Okay. Don't get that. Don't you want to test drive the guy? Don't I, you want yes. to know what's no, there? Because you know what? what Let me just put it in perspective from men. Sometimes a man will take you for granted. And that's just my opinion. You want to follow it? You follow your way. I'm telling you my way. I'm not letting no man get into no living situation with me and audition me to be a wife. If you want me to be a wife, you better give me a license, a ring, and half your check. Okay. Okay. I disagree. And that leads to the voice. No. Yeah, no, I think, I think to each, I think 
to each their own, but I will I will say this. I got engaged in nine months, and I wouldn't move in with them until I got engaged. I have friends that are still in those relationships back then, and they're still not engaged. So it definitely works, yeah. and it has its the advantages. The engagement time is, is the so testing period. that you were not going to unless... It was a non-negotiable. We yeah. weren't going to live together until he put Did a ring on it. I, I bought an apartment with him when we were dating. I mean, that's how sure I was. I think, here, getting back to what you said about living with someone, the first year of marriage is very tough, and some of the problems that exist are like little habits that can kill a marriage. I mean, like what he does in the bathroom. I think it's nice to know what it's like to live with, with someone, and it got me through the first year marriage because I already knew what he'd be like. Yeah, because I live with him. So yeah, but divorce. I think they change after you put the wedding ring on. I they think that yeah. Too. Oh, they do. We yeah, all do. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know. They totally trust that. But I lived with Richard too, and I don't have any regrets about See? it. Yeah.